fast. All right, I don't have the gavel, thankfully, because it makes a lot of noise. Uh, we'll call this meeting of the Scammy County Competency Board May 3rd, 23. Oh, well, that clock's wrong up there. Yeah, I'm three minutes early. Yeah, we have to wait until then. Sorry, we're, we're going to wait. The clock up there's wrong. Sorry, y'all. We are not starting the meeting yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice short meeting. My clocks are usually late. That's why that's my excuse anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, that's what I was going by. <laughs> I told him that you would tell him to sit here anyhow. Yeah, and I said that you'd be fine with that because she we'll put you to me work up. if you sit at this table. She backed me up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so now you're going to have to work. That's all right. I'm sure you're just here to say nice things. Yes. Always. I defer to John. Christy, have you met John Bonner? <laughs> I defer to John. I defer to John. Stop. I've been doing that, I've been doing that all week. I know. <laughs> hey, well, Jennifer. Well, you talk to Jennifer about that. We're going to yeah. monitor. Are they not on? No. no I hope they're, they're not. not. Well, that might be. Hey, David. Excuse me. It was working earlier. Yeah. I just want to point that out. I hope they're not on, because if they're on, I've got a problem. <laughs> it's just dandy. Don't I, though? You look good there. Making a comeback. Oh, I don't want to see that. <laughs> hey, Christy. Yes, ma'am. What's on my computer? Contact the uh, board rules. Yeah, it's on, but it's not. But I didn't unplug anything. It was working until you told us not to go. Because he was switching it between the systems. There it is. That was it, whatever the last thing was. There it is. Screws screwed in on the black and white. Just stand there and hold it. Just watch it. All right, now we'll call to order the meeting of the Scambia County Competency Board regular meeting, May 3rd, 2023. Um, do we have a quorum? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, with three members, I mean, six members present, we do. Um, do you want to read that first? Yes, sir. The Escambia County Contractor Competency Board rules are as follows. Please silence all cell phones if you wish to speak. Please let the board secretary know in advance. Otherwise, raise your hand for the board chair to recognize your request. 
When the chairman calls you to speak, come to the podium, adjust the microphone, and then state your name and address for the record. You are requested to keep your remarks brief and factual. Both parties of an issue will be granted uniform maximum time to speak. This usually runs between three to five minutes. This hearing is considered quasi-judicial. Conduct is formal and profane or derogatory comments will not be tolerated. All right, we have proof of publication. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. It was published on April 27th, 2023 in the Escambia County Sun Press. All right, we have the County Competency Board minutes of April 5th, 2023. Those will be approved at the next meeting. We did not receive those back in time for the agenda. All right, thank you. All right, now we have time for a public forum uh, limited to three minutes. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. We have two parties present that wish to speak at public forum. Lisa Burnell, if you could please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Lisa Bruneau with the Escambia County Housing Finance Authority. We're at 700 South Palafox. I'm happy to be with you this morning. I briefly talked with Melissa in the past couple of weeks, and one of our urban infill builders has come before you, and there were some questions, perhaps about our program, perhaps about his involvement. So I just thought I would come on behalf of the Escambia County Housing Finance Authority five-member board and as the executive director share with you just a little bit of information. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to stop talking and answer those at any time. The authority was put into effect by ordinance. The Escambia County Board of County Commissioners decided that in 1980. And about 15 years ago, we started an urban infill program I like to say this as an attorney, I don't do the financial speak as well as some of the accountants. So what I say is in the past eight years, we have built with the help of 16 local builders, 60 homes in the urban infill areas that not everybody wants to build a home. And we currently have 23 additional homes in progress. And so what that really means is we serve as the bank. We give a loan with 0% interest. We utilize that through a mortgage on the property. So a potential builder in our program who's already been pre-approved can either bring a parcel he owns or he can come to us and say a parcel's available that I could build through your program on. And we will review that. We will set up a file once it meets our qualifications. And then we will prepare a mortgage for that builder to sign off on with us. And we will utilize a draw system they can use the first draw to buy a parcel if we don't already own a parcel that they can build on. But we do not police the day to day. We serve as the bank. So our review and monitoring is limited to more of a bank loan process with zero interest. And at the end of the day and the process, our hope is that we can continue to add in Escambia County more affordable programs to low and moderate income families. We also have other programs. We also serve 21 counties in the state of Florida. We're very proud to serve as a housing finance authority for some very small and medium sized counties that don't have a county department equivalent for that function. So we're happy to help with multifamily developments. Um, millions of dollars go into those projects, either acquisition rehab or new construction. And we have some new construction on the books for Escambia County, and we're looking forward to that. But really, I just wanted to come to you and say, we do have urban infill builders as a part of our program. We're very excited about that aspect. Sometimes the down payment assistance program we have for first time home buyers, they not only receive down payment assistance, but they can use that toward an urban infill home in Escambia County and have a double benefit through our program. So we're happy to be here, answer questions and serve our community. Thank you. Thank you for the information. We appreciate it. Thank you. Larry Downs, Jr. Please state your name and address for the record. Larry Downs, Jr. Plumbing, LLC, because fecal matters. 12156 Habberg Drive, Pensacola, Florida. Uh, Interesting, that lady just came up. I think they're going to have some new programs coming to where people who have better credit can cover the financing or some of the interest rate for the people who don't have good credit. It's all about fair. <laughs> 
spread it. Uh, anyways, I've had a few calls uh, that some board members up here may be, uh, may be using the application approval for testing as a means of uh, uh, possibly limiting future competition. Uh, you know, you are a competency board, not a protectionism board. If they, if staff puts through an application and recommends, y'all should approve. I was on this board almost four years, and every one of my motions for licensure or for application to test was motion to approve. Every one of them. Even when I know good and well that a 45-year-old woman wearing heels, weighs 100 pounds, ain't done plumbing all her life, or probably any. You know, I can look at the hands, you know. I know plumbing's a man's job, and, uh, and that's probably uh, very offensive. <laughs> but it is. It is. Am I saying no women can do it? No. Am I saying that most can't or won't? Yeah. Same way in the garbage business. Most won't. Most don't want to. Most men don't want to. But anyways, don't be using this, this uh, process to deny people their right to try just because you may have some bad feelings about them or because maybe they might be future competition. If the application comes through, staff approves, then you all make a motion to approve. This, is, do you see how that could be a conflict of interest if you have the very license? that you're questioning and denying somebody else the right to go test for that license, that could be a problem. You know, I mean, and you can come up with a thousand ways, but until they try, you don't know what they're going to do. One other thing, too, uh, they got a new uh, COVID vaccine coming out June, July, Pfizer. So if y'all believe in those kind of things, y'all make sure to go get them. I would love to uh, follow y'all up there and uh, document you getting your number six shot if that's what you want. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy pointing out the obvious. Also, the name of my new website is missionobvious.com. You can see videos that are censored everywhere else. Adios. Anybody else? No, sir. We have no other sign-up sheets. Okay, board secretary status report. Um, so I wanted to discuss with you our June meeting. Um, it, it, it was scheduled for June 7th. Um, I've talked with Melissa. We do not have many uh, cases under investigation. I know that I will be out during that time. I didn't know if the board wanted to just hold that meeting until in July or I want to get advice from the board on the June meeting because I know that I will be out on June 7th. Would you I, rather I, have it the following week on June 14th or would you just rather wait until July, the July meeting? I think if there's not enough for the agenda to really warrant one, it's not a do not want to take the board's time. The, Melissa, uh, would you like to? Unless in, um, anything ends up in disciplinary today, it, there isn't very many cases. Um, the ones that I do have appear to be working out, which we always like that. So, Okay. So does anybody have any recommendations? Uh, I, I'm okay with not having one, but I guess I need someone else to make the motion to. What's the date of the July meeting? July 12th. I'll make a motion to move the meeting to July 12th. Can I get a second? I'll second that motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, contractor applications. 
Yes, sir. We'll move. Uh, Jessica, if you're ready. Mr. Chairman, we have applicant Alan Small. Mr. Small, please come forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Good morning, everyone. I'm Alan Small. Uh, my address is 352 Mizen Lane, Pensacola, Florida, 32507. Um, I'm applying for my HVAC B license. I've, I've got about eight, nine years experience. Uh, got pretty reputable letters. I'm sure y'all looked over and just uh, trying to get approved for my application to be able to take my test. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. After reviewing his application, we recommend he be approved for the air conditioning B testing. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. Good luck. Thank you all very much. Mr. Small? After the meeting, you can meet with Jessica or Teresa Blanton, and they will be able to assist you with those vouchers, okay? okay? Cool. Thank you very much. Our next applicant is Austin Bruton. Mr. Bruton, please come forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Good morning. Good morning. Austin Bruton, 3200 Mason Road, McDavid, Florida, 32568. Um, applying for my master plumber and gas. Been plumbing since... 2010 yeah 2010 so all right after reviewing his application we recommend he be approved for the master plumber with gas testing uh, can I get a motion motion to approve second any discussion all in favor say aye aye any opposed hearing none motion carries thank you good luck mr. Bruton that'll be the same they'll help you with the vouchers our next applicant is Stephen Quinn. Mr. Quinn, please come forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record. My name is Stephen Quinn. Uh, I live at 8063 South Airport Road in Milton, Florida, um, 32583. And I'm applying for my master gas and my class A air conditioning. I've been doing it for about uh, 14 years or so with Sears and now with the college. And um, looking forward to taking the next step. All right. So, board, Mr. Quinn has two applications before you. Okay. We will need separate motions for each application. After reviewing his application for master gas, we recommend uh, approval for testing and as well as air conditioning A. Okay. Can I get a motion for the master gas? Motion to approve for the master gas. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now can I get a motion for the air conditioning? <laughs> motion to approve for air conditioning A. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Quinn, they'll be able to assist you with those vouchers, okay? Probable cause hearings. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Item 8-1 is Michael E. Prouty, Jr., doing business as Tecton Building Group, Inc. Incorporated. State certified license number CGC 1510335. Contractor Competency Board complaint number 230442 COM. It's in regard to Jimmy and Shannon Seals, the homeowner complainants at 428 Orby Drive, Pensacola, Florida. 32534. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. and Mrs. Seals, are you present? Are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Yes. Mr. Prouty, are you present? And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Perfect. If you could all be stand and be sworn in at this time, and I'm going to have Melissa Reber, our investigator, sworn in, and she will remain sworn in for the duration of this hearing. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? Yes, there was, March 20th, 2023. And were you able to communicate with the complainants about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? Yes, I was. Did the complainant provide any supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? 
They did, and yes, it's all attached. Did the respondent provide a supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, he did, and it's also attached. Were permits obtained? If so, when, and what are their current status? Um, permits were obtained um, for a garage addition and an interior renovation on February 8th, 2022. The garage passed framing inspection on October 22nd, 2022, and has had no other inspections. The renovation permit had a framing inspection on October 27th, 2022, and no other inspections were performed. Staff requests at this time that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. Can I get a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each violation and your justification. Um, I was allegedly code section 1837 D8. Um, the seals presented some evidence that uh, monies have been paid. Um, there has been some things that have not been inspected, some things uh, now that they have gotten another contractor, they have to, <clears throat> pardon me, pay an additional to get those um, taken care of. And there is also some uh, subcontract billing that was not paid and uh, they're facing a possible lien on their property. Uh, code section 1837 D9D. Um, it appears that there could have been some electrical work performed by um, Mr. Prouty, and, and he is not licensed to do that. Code section 1837 D9F. The SEALs did send Mr. Prouty a 10-day notice requesting that, um, they, per, that they be provided uh, the financial records regarding uh, the monies that he received from the construction loan and, and what happened with them and, and what subcontractors were paid and not paid. Um, they have not received that information. Code section 1837D12B, this relates back to uh, when he received construction draws, he signed releases of liens stating that um, the monies received under that draw would be covering various items. Um, one of them was electrical and since learned that that was not paid. Code section 1837D15C, um, on the renovation application for permit, windows were not listed and uh, the house received all new windows. Therefore, they've, they've never been inspected because they were not on the renovation permit. Mr. and Ms. Seals, this is your opportunity to come to the podium and address the board in regard to the case. Please state your name and address for the record. Jim Seals, 428 Orby Street. And Shannon Seals, 428 Orby. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, forgive me, I'm, uh, I'm used to speaking in public for about things that I know about. Uh, I am a licensed clinical social worker. I work for the Veterans Health Administration and I'm a retired Marine. Uh, my wife is a teacher working for Escambia County School District. I'm here today in regards to the whole house renovation done on 428 Orby Street, where I hired Michael Prouty um, to be my general contract. A contract was signed on 10-14-21. Construction was to begin within 30 days and last a total of four months. 
we did do a great majority of the demolition for the construction uh, as a cost saving measure and uh, and because uh, the contractor claimed he had another job was on another job I believe in Perdido or somewhere uh, the contractor claimed he could live in we could live in one room and demolish the rest of the house while he begins framing out the new build in order to maintain our contract with the lender we also that's another reason we began the demolition uh, because no construction was beginning within 30 days so we went ahead and started uh, so that I could maintain my contract with the lender uh, while consulting with Prouty. Uh, the contractor was advised multiple times that he could take over the demolition and begin construction if things were going too slow for him. Multiple text messages and emails confirm this. Uh, as we were unsure of what we were doing, we asked many questions of Prouty during this time. The plans call for an engineering inspection in one area of the house before the wall was to be removed in the downstairs. This wall turned out to be a support wall and, could, and uh, would not be cost affected to remove, so a change had to be done to the plans that was uh, noted in the original plans, but never submitted to the county uh, once they were changed. Um, this didn't, uh, the, the demolition, all that didn't prohibit him from doing uh, beginning framing anywhere uh, there's multiple emails and contacts between us where I ask him is there anything we can do to facilitate you is there anything we can do to help you go to get this done because now by now the bank is already beginning to let us know that it's taking too long um, the contractor pulled permits on at the beginning of February uh, he got the, to the change to the plans on one March uh, he didn't begin actual work until the 1st of April. It should be noted that a change order was submitted at this time and paid right away. Uh, at this point, we were nearing the scheduled completion date. Uh, on 24th of April, the contractor said we should do demo the one room we were living in, uh, and we went ahead and did that and moved into... Uh, our FEMA trailer uh, for what was supposed to be a period of six to eight weeks. Um, we ended up being in that trailer uh, for nine months. Owners repeatedly asked if we could assist him to complete his project in a timely manner. On 3 March 2023, the contractor was discussing final payment with the owner. The, uh, I was happy to discuss final payment and I agreed that he should be paid as quickly as possible as soon as he completed the job. When I made that statement, he became irate. He lost it. Uh, he wanted to be paid prior to completion. Uh, he then sent me a text message claiming that he was going to start charging me for everything he had done out of generosity. He then claimed handrails and insulation in the attic were extra and we had to pay $14,000 cash or he would not continue knowing the bank was uh, threatening to default at any moment. On the 4th of April, the contractor advised the electrician he would be in default after the 30th, that we would be in default after the 30th of April and he should file a lien on us because the bank will be taking over the money and more likely to pay the additional funds. <clears throat> Even though he had already been uh, paid for the electrical and provided a lien release on January 20, 23rd. Uh, should I go through each one? Should each one of the... Each one of what, sir? Each one of the violations. The ones that are up on the screen, the one, the alleged ones? Yes. If you would like to provide a statement as to each one, sure. Okay. Um, as, as to 1837 D8, uh, he was paid $2,000 for permits. 
he spent less than a thousand and didn't pull the permits. He only, he only pulled those couple of permits that she listed. Uh, he, he charged for the installation of a broken tub and the replacement uh, for installing a tub twice. Uh, he never installed the tub the first time he set it in the place to pass inspection. Uh, it was placed there, it was just sitting there. It was broken, uh, and he put it in knowing that it was broken. Um, he used the funds to get his house out of foreclosure and did not pay subcontractors. This, lien releases were signed and dated by Michael Prouty for each draw and uh, discussed in text messages. Electrical, he owes more than $15,000. Plumber is owed over $2,000. HVAC is owed $1,000. And windows are not paid for, according to Mr. Prouty. Um, I myself, uh, I, I'm a telehealth provider. I lost many clients as a result of, I, I do work from home. I, I work from an office and I was una unable to take a new job that, where I was hired uh, to perform tele telework. Hmm? Uh, the owner, myself and my wife, paid $1,000 to the tile company. We paid the plumber $8,550. We bought the tub, most electrical fixtures, all exterior doors, and five toilets. All of the aforementions were part of the bid. Uh, owner lost multiple, oh, let's see, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, after being reassured by the contractor multiple times that he would complete the build sometime around Thanksgiving of 22, the owners bought, fam bought family plane tickets and planned a family event for Christmas a month later. Uh, the owner was forced to rent an Airbnb as a result. Contractor provided checks to the electrician with insufficient funds on two occasions. Also to the uh, siding guy, which he didn't have a permit for that one either. Um, 1837D9D, uh, unlicensed work. He cut trusses to install exhaust vent without engineering notes. Uh, and then he uh, lists it in the, uh, the extras list that he was charging me. So uh, he, he notes that he did do that. He also added headers, uh, which required an engineering inspection. He installed 220 wiring on an air handler. Uh, my smoke alarms were going off and I, I thought they were broken or the battery was dead. Well, it turns out that it was a, it, the fire burned itself out. <clears throat> Um, the trusses have to be repaired. Uh, that is, uh, what, 1800 dollars to have the trusses repaired. Uh, 1837 D9F. Prouty failed to provide a list of subcontractors and suppliers as required and sent on four, April 4th certified. Uh, we requested receipts for the windows and he hasn't produced those either. Uh, there's a, a window that had to cost $2,500 sitting in my garage right now that I don't need. It's a, a bay window of some sort, uh, but he said it was free, the, the delivery company, but it's listed on the packing list. I don't think a delivery company is going to deliver me a free window that costs that much. Um, he failed to provide notice to owners. Uh, about the recovery fund. I, I, I didn't learn about that until, uh, until I hired a lawyer. Um, as far as 1837D12B, fraud or deceit. Uh, he charged the owner for installation of bathroom fans that were installed once. He said he had to take them down and reinstall them. I bought them before. Uh, they were installed. The electrician confirmed with me that he installed them one time. He, he didn't install them twice. Uh, then, of course, the tub was set in place, and then I was charged to remove it 
and reinstall it again, uh, even though it was broken before they even brought it up the stairs. Uh, he charged for moving the stairs. Uh, he installed new stairs. Those, he didn't install those according to the plans, and they had to be removed and redone again because he didn't follow the plan uh, that uh, moved the stairs. Uh, he charged for moving electrical outlets in the bathrooms and bunk rooms where electrician didn't charge for that. The electrician moved those. Uh, he was being a nice guy, and he moved them. <clears throat> uh, he charged the owners uh, for installing eight house jacks and two large beams. Okay, there are six house jacks under my house in one large beam, and then there are two wooden posts on dirt with a two-by-four holding up floor joists. Uh, the contractor stated several times all throughout the build that he was going to do insulation and handrails uh, and now the, those are extra uh, now the insulation in the walls got done but the insulation that goes in the ceiling is uh, additional funds this is a Fannie Mae loan by the way I I don't know if you're familiar with those. They don't make a loan for, to get a house where you got to get another loan to finish it. Uh, he uh, didn't complete the uh, the porch. He uh, left. There was the plans have steps on the porch. You, you're supposed to be able to get off the porch. Well, you can't get off the porch. I, there's no steps. <coughs> He charged the owners for painting doors, uh, and uh, these doors are not painted, they are primed. They came from the factory primed. Uh, I have pictures, I took a picture of the top of the door, it's bare wood, and also there's a stamp that says void if not sealed. And as a result, many of the doors in the house are beginning to delaminate. 1837D15C. Uh, the windows were installed throughout the house without a permit. Siding was installed without a permit. Doors were installed. Plans submitted to the county were not the plans the contractor built on. And, yeah. Yeah. My husband just mentioned a small portion of the issues that we have. We can go on and on and on. And I just want to let you know the mental toll that this has taken on us. We lived in that FEMA trailer just under a year with no toilet. We used a porta potty. We waved at the neighbors as we went to the bathroom for almost a year. We had no stove. We had no oven. This were a choice that we made, thinking it was going to be about a month. And it was almost a year. It was hard on us. It's been very hard with two large dogs and a cat living in this trailer. And than the financial burden that is put on us. We've had to get two additional loans to just complete when he became out of funds so that we could keep the project going. That's when we bought the doors, the electrical. We paid, the plumber was not gonna come out again unless we paid him. This is when we started getting loans to help pay so we could get on track and get into our home. Um, I'm not even sure why the communication broke down between us. A lot of these things did not even come to light to us until after the communication broke down with him. Um, there was supposed to be a final inspection done on February 28th. The bank has been on our case about defaulting, not because of money, but because it's gone past the 18 months. And when the, country, when the inspector did not come out on the 28th, Mike started getting very angry, and I'm like, what's going on? Let me help you. We have lots of emails, and I believe they're part of the evidence, saying, we don't know what's going on. Let's get this done. Whatever we need to do, we'll help you. Let's just get the job done. And then communication just stopped. And it was never on our part. I don't know. Um, and, like, the windows installed, we don't even think they need egress. We think our windows are, that we paid over $25,000 are going to have to be replaced on, on the upstairs. Um, there's some other code violations. We got a step that's not to code to get up to the house. There's many other things that I think are going to be found when an, inspect an inspector comes out. 
thank you for your time. Thank you. Any questions? Hmm. All right, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Prouty, this is your opportunity to address the board in regard to the case. Michael Prouty, Tecton Building Group, uh, listed address is 6797 Data Street, Pensacola, Florida. Uh, I don't know where to start. I can go over just the list that they did and give my rebuttal. But uh, we bid the job. We were given what their appraised value was going to be, how much they'd pay we need to fit within this budget. So we budgeted it for 100 something dollars a square foot. Upon starting, it took four months to get the plans of major changes to which they add a whole other bathroom, enlarged another bathroom, all because of a beam couldn't, a wall couldn't be removed. So then they thought that was gonna be for the same price. Then, um, um, let's see, yeah, let's do install. The tub that they keep mentioning has been broke. I have the text and I have a copy of the text where she asked for it to be installed for her inspection. <laughs> So it wasn't done for no reason. I didn't want to install a tub for no reason. That be that makes no sense. Uh, my house is not in foreclosure. I'd like to have them provide documentation to where my house is in foreclosure. The HJC has been paid. None of the draws stay. Only the first few draws from the bank showed who what items were being paid. Everything else said draw four, draw five, draw six, draw six. It did not say who to pay. It just Here's your draw, here's the amount. So I did not sign off saying I was paying the electrician on this draw, I was paying this person on this draw. There's still $48,000, $43,000 left, it's plain to pay, everybody needs to be paid, but we're not getting paid because the seals won't approve it. For $100 a square foot, every single item that we chose that we were automatically gonna put in there, she stated she did not like six panel doors, she wanted upgraded doors. She did not want uh, 12 by 24 tile. She wanted fancy hexagon tiles. She wanted the whole back wall in her bathroom tiled 12 feet by eight feet, all for $100 a square foot. Uh, all the fixtures that, oh, they wanted $900 toilets in five bathrooms for $100 a square foot. All the fixtures on the contract were given allowances. And they were mentioned over and over and over and over again. Here's your tile allowance. Here's your lighting allowance. Here's your plumbing allowance. Not one thing was ever paid attention to. I have copies of the text that I can provide you showing that's not within budget. I don't care, I'll pay for it. Nothing's been paid for, only what the bank's paid. And then uh, I have a text, well the bank says they're not gonna pay for these, but I still want this, please provide it. So when I send them the bill, well we'll pay for it at the end. Well here we are at the very end, nothing but a final inspection left and I sent them a bill, and we're not paying that. So, fixtures, uh, notice to owner. Everything I saw says that I am the prime contractor. All I do is a notice of commencement, not a notice to owner. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, an inspection that was not mentioned was that there was a nail inspection performed. If there's a nail inspection performed, I'm pretty sure he inspected the nails and the straps and the windows. <laughs> So that, I don't know why that inspection wasn't mentioned. The windows were not listed on the permit, yeah. so the therefore I don't, I don't inspection. know. You didn't list the nail inspection. Okay. Uh, the stairs would not fit, the stairs fit. She wanted the stairs tucked back behind a closet. And the previous ones were only 10 inches deep. The new ones, of course, have to be 12 inches deep. When you make the stairs 12 inches deep, they're gonna stick out past the closet that they did not stick out past before. But that was not acceptable. Uh, insulation, of, insulation and handrails, it was not included. But neither was the hot water heater that wasn't on the plans that I paid for. Neither was the trusses that uh, whenever it came time to buy them, I had to pay $1,500 that I brought from Mississippi. Uh, they added generator. I told them just go ahead and pay the electrician themselves. I don't need to add to it. I know you're trying to stay within the budget. I've, the house was drywalled before we even got windows. When we never went to get windows, they kept asking for the same price it took them. I have three months after we tried to order the windows, they're asking me for a price of a bifold pocket, a bifold sliding door on the outside. Three months after, three, four months after we tried to order the windows. 
uh, whenever I chose to try to do tile selections, I have where I said I need the tile selections by Friday. It took a month and uh, five, took five weeks to get the tile selections. <laughs> so, I mean, I, can, I have all the, the printouts from every one of those texts and everything. That, and uh, he says he has a text of saying where he told me I could uh, do the demo. I don't have it. I have, all I have is they had to do the demo and they didn't complete it. We had to step in and complete it ourselves and he hasn't been billed for it. So I don't, I don't know how much more generous. Uh, because we drywalled the house before we got windows because we were waiting, I cased all the windows, didn't charge them a bit. I've done everything generous I could possibly do to make this go on. Their selections and they're adding and adding and adding and adding. It's just drawing it all out. So I don't know what more I could possibly do for anybody. So that's all I, all I can say. Mr. Prouty, all those documents that you've mentioned and yep. you have, were all of those provided to us? No, because I was only provided with the original complaint. I wasn't provided with all the rest of the documents that came up on this. Right, you were sent the original complaint yeah, form. Yeah, the original complaint, not and all the rest of the stuff. Yeah. So I didn't have time to uh, provide documentation to change that. I don't usually, because yeah. that comes in all through the case. You yeah. did provide a statement, which is yeah. in there, yeah. and whatever documentation you provided. Thorough, so I could have provided okay. contradictory yes, sir. stuff for that. And if you would like for me to make any copies of yeah, that, I we can eventually idea. get it yeah. put in the record. We okay. can do that. All right. Thank you. That's it. Did you want to provide that information to her? Yeah. All right, any questions? <clears throat> Mr. Prouty? Um, there's a bunch of questions running through the mind. The one is I'm looking here uh, on the permit. I don't see the, the windows were permitted, and maybe I'm missing something. I'm trying I may to. Admit, I may have accidentally missed it. I, I don't know. I, told, I talked to the inspector about it. I said we're changing the windows. I mean, the windows were not even in the house. So I, that's my fault. Do they meet the code yeah. of egress? Yeah, that was two feet. To, uh, two feet. They're, two foot, they're three foot wide, two foot tall. They're four by three windows. Mm -hmm. Swift has guaranteed me they meet egress. The casement windows? Or? No, they're sliders. I don't think four by three meets code, does it, Mr. Randy? And the replacement windows as well. So. Tim, Mr. Lister was asking a question about a window size and whether it met code requirements. Mr. Lister, if you could repeat that. I think he said the windows are 4030 slider. On that, uh, for emergency egress from a bedroom, it depends on the window, actually. Uh, they're they're not all different, but um, typically a uh, 3050 meets it. Right. Um, but less than that, it, it's just up to the window. Swift assured me. I asked them over and over again. So I, it's on the first first floor, second uh, floor? Second floor. Okay. That would be 5.7 square foot. Uh, 20 inches. It's got to be a minimum of 20 inches wide, 24 inches high. But it's not 20 by 24. It's just the minimums. Right. And if not, I've asked Swift. It's in writing. So if Swift messed it up, they can replace the windows. <laughs> Swift is Okay. Yeah. I have another question for Mr. Talbert. Do you, you mind? About the windows. Um, if there are replacement windows, do you have to modify the opening, existing opening, or can you? Oh, actually, if the replacement windows, no. From my read, the replacement windows That's don't correct. even meet that. Don't even need to meet it when I read a line. That's correct. Okay. So, Thank you. It's a null, null and void. If I'm not mistaken, the code is, was Tim, that if you replace, is it? 25. 25 percent of them, you have to make the to meet code and pull permits, et cetera? That's only for uh, impact resistance. Impact, okay. Okay. And they all are impact glass. Mm -hmm.
Any more questions? Are y'all still thinking for some? <laughs> when was the last time there was an inspection done on the house? October um, of 2022 were the last inspections that were done. Jennifer, if you want to pull up the inspection reports, it can show you what was there and any inspector notes. Um, what I That was before your inspection, correct? Yes, inspection. yes. Um, and what wasn't, the SEALs may have said it, but they also terminated the contract, therefore the permits were, were terminated, and I believe that was in, in March. But the last inspections that were done were in October of 2022. And has the work been completed since then? They do have another contractor. Um, I didn't confirm if they've gone on and done any inspections to this point. The SEALs may be able to speak to that. As the new contractor, has he pulled a permit to finish the work? No, he has not. He has not. And, and he may not have started. I might be misspeaking. Okay. Um, Can we ask them? Sure. Has the work uh, been completed or is it still standstill? Is it possible we can get an inspector to go out there before he pulls a permit so we can look and see the status of the condition of the house? Yes, work has already been performed. There's handrails and stuff on the house now. Say again? Work has already been performed. There's handrails like and stuff on can, the house uh, now. Mr. Prouty, can you step aside? So, and gentlemen, could you come forward and speak in, so we can get it on the record properly? Thank you. For safety reasons, I installed handrails. That's the only thing that's been done to the house since he left. And you can identify that with the inspector that comes in and does the inspection, the work that was yes, completed sir. after the fact. Yes, sir. So for clarification, the board is requesting that the uh, building official or his designee perform a courtesy inspection to see the current status of the project. I'm recommending we do that if the board's okay with it. Okay. Then my suggestion would be to continue this probable cause, not only to give time for uh, the documentation that Mr. Prouty has bought, brought today, so that can be presented to the board as an agenda, agenda items, but also give time for the building official or his designee to perform that courtesy inspection. So do we need to have a motion for that courtesy inspection or will that be taken care of without a motion? It was direction from the board. Okay. Uh, so can I get a motion to continue this? Sure. So, Mr. Prouty, did you pay all the subs? Are all are they all completed now? The ones that you used? The HVAC subs been paid. Uh, the only ones that have not been paid is Swift for uh, the remainder of the windows, the electrician, and uh, the plumber, which is still these. The amount the bank has stated they owe me is forty three or forty eight thousand dollars, and it's thirty something that's owed. Mm -hmm. And you haven't paid them because you because I haven't been paid. You haven't been paid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that's not including the extras. That's okay. only the amount from the original contract is still left. There's 60 something with the extras. And have those subs filed an additional lien on the property? No, they have not. Okay. Thank have, you. They, have they submitted a notice to owner? No, they have not. That's probably why they didn't file a lien. <laughs> right. Okay. okay. Mr. Pratt, did, did you change orders as the changes was done for? I sent several in, and then the bank stopped, would not approve them, so they put in writing. Just do the work and we will pay you, and it's in the, the information. And okay, mm -hmm. okay. I have one more question. So the HVAC, the plumber, and the electrician are all licensed? Yes. Did they pull their permits, or does it just fall under the main permit? Uh, could you give me just a moment? No, take your time. So what you see on your screen is our permitting software. You will see where um, these two items that are contract terminated were Mr. Prouty's um, permit permits. Um, electrical was pulled for the remodel. That was for the temp pole. There was plumbing, gas, and then electrical for the actual remodel. Um, and then there's mechanical as well. And those inspections have been done and closed? As you notice, all of the status of all those permits are a closed status. That means they had their proper inspections and were closed. Any more questions?
Okay, can I get a motion to continue? I think it was a request. I'll make a motion to continue. Seconded. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Just so you all are aware, that will be continued to July. You heard them earlier that um, the next meeting will be held in July. Okay, you you will receive notice. Thank you. All right, thank you. Our next item. Oh, hang on, just a moment. Let me clean up my screen here. Our next item is Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC, state registered license number RR2828120001, contractor competency board complaint number 230443COM. It's in regard to Brian Allen, the homeowner complainant at 7727 Deborah Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32514. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Um, Mr. Allen, are you present today? And Mr. Banks is not present today. I'm sure everybody is aware of what has occurred. Um, I would like to defer this over to uh, our county attorney, um, Christy, so that she can talk about uh, notice and, and about his absence. Can you tell me what date the notice was sent? In our in our documentation, the uh, return receipt was it, the notice was sent on April twentieth, twenty twenty three. All right, I'm just looking up at the date of his uh, rearrest. So I believe he would have. Um, the no date of notice April 20th 2023 and did we have any return on that notice not as of yet no okay so it looks like it was in um, he was arrested right at the end of April so he should have received that he was rearrested um, on a no bond I don't have a exact date um, April 20th. The 20th. Okay. I'll pull it up on the clerk website are there any questions I, I tend to believe he did get or the notice. We know that the notice was sent. I don't think he often replies to our notices. It's not his common behavior. Typically, no, we do not receive a response. I do know that he has an attorney in the criminal case. Um, but as, as of yet, he hasn't given us a name in this. And I think he may have mentioned previously that he had an attorney, but he hasn't given us anything in this case. So we didn't have to notice the attorney. I'm just double checking with the clerk's office on that date of rearrest. What I can tell the court is having him have his bond I tell the court what I can tell the board with his bond being revoked it would be unlikely that he'll ever that he'll be able to appear anytime in the near future it depends on uh, what Michael Griffith can pull off as a as a defense attorney to get him a hearing um, he was rearrested on the uh, on charges related to um, workers comp I don't know if you're familiar with that um, I mean, I know you're familiar with workers' comp. I don't know if you know the if you're familiar with the charges. The last time he was in court was on April 28th. Um, the clerk's record doesn't say the clerk record that I'm looking at doesn't say that he was taken into custody. Michael Griffith did appear for him on his behalf. 
So I would, but we know uh, based on reporting that he was taken into custody at that time, or he was taken into custody on the 4, 428 based on the news reports we had. But the worksheet I'm looking at doesn't have that information. So he should have received notice. We sent it according to the procedure that's allowed under the law. So he should have received notice um, because he chose to continue um, in criminal behavior when he was out on bond. Um, then he, that works as um, a decision on his part to be, um, he took the risk of being caught and having his bond revoked. So he took that risk and it's his actions that have caused him to not be here. Um, and I would point out to the board that he's never been present for, or he hasn't been present in many months. Attempt to deliver on April 21st. Notice was left. Okay. It would appear, based on the um, records from the U.S. Postal Service, that they attempted to deliver on April 21st and notice was left. So he would have had an opportunity to pick up that mail uh, if he had chosen. But that's the requirement sent it to the last known address. It's just in that whether or not. Right. We sent it certified and, right. and that's, that's, we can't make people pick up their right. mail. So I, I would advise the board that he, he received n proper notice. Um, or we attempted proper notice, and then on top of that, he chose to absent himself by his own behavior. And I would also make the board aware that he was not, um, um, he has not been present for a number of items, a number of months, uh, whenever we've had cases involving him. I don't and know that I've. S June. Since June of last year. Right. I don't think he's ever been to a meeting that I've been to. So if the board wants to proceed at this time, um, it, this is a probable cause hearing. He received notice, and he absented himself by his own behavior. Okay. Um, the complainant is present, I believe. Yes. Um, if you is sure, we'd like to hear, we're gonna hear see, from him, proceed? please. Okay, um, Mr. Allen, if you could please be sworn in. I'm going to just go through and ask Ms. Reber a few questions, and, th and then we'll proceed, okay? Um, Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with this board, and on what date was it filed? Yes, there was, March 6th, 2023. And were you able to communicate with the complainant about this case? Yes, I was. And uh, how about the respondent? Um, he was notified of the complaint, but he, he did not respond. And did the complainant provide uh, supporting documentation for this complaint? And is, is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, he did, and it's all attached. And uh, did the respondent provide any uh, supporting documentation? No, he did not. Were permits obtained? If so, when and what are their current status? Uh, there were no permits obtained uh, by banks for this closet addition or roof. Uh, staff would request that the atta uh, documentation attached to the agenda be moved into evidence. So moved. Can you get a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each violation and your justification. Yes, I was. Allegedly code section 1837C6, Mr. Allen uh, made a $14,500 deposit on July 16th of 2021 of a $29,000 contract. Um, the only thing that has been done were doors were installed but never completed. There's no trim around them and no permit, therefore not inspected. Code section 1837 D4, uh, Mr. Banks did not pull any permits or submit any plans for this project. Code section 1837 D9J, Mr. Banks' contract did not contain the required verbiage of letting Mr. Allen know about the construction recovery fund. Good morning. Would you Mr. like to make Allen, comments? It, 
yes, yeah. it's your Ryan opportunity. Ryan Allen, 7727 Deborah Drive, Pensacola, Florida. Uh, that really sums it up. There was not much communication, multiple people in and out of my house, which all very nice guys, you know, took notes on the scope of the project, said they'd get back to me. Maybe the third one, Justin Benton, finally came out and uh, got got the doors done, said he'd get guys back out there maybe the week after because they had another project and just uh, never really heard from anybody. Just uh, every every few weeks they'd say, hey, when are you going to buy the doors to complete the doors? And I'd remind them for a fifth and sixth time that the doors were already done. I just need somebody to finish them. And then I'd get another message saying, when am I going to buy the doors so they could come out and install them? And I'd remind them yet again it was already done. And that was probably the last four, five, six months until all the legal stuff started to transpire. Okay. And then lack of any sort of communication after that. Any questions from the board? Thank you very much. All right. It's up to the board. It's their discretion on what they want to do. Chair, I motion we move this to disciplinary hearing. I second that. Based on the alleged violations. Based Committed. on the alleged violations. And I have a second. Second. Uh, any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, on a side note, we were discussing how to um, with this going to disciplinary hearing, as it sounds like it might be. It did. We will, uh, well, when it yeah. does, yeah. in July, um, we're d we were just discussing notice approach. And so um, the plan is to send it to the last known address, the one that he has on file, which right. he's required to maintain. Um, but since he may have more complications getting that straightened out uh, from the jail, um, that we will also notice it at the jail with a hand personal delivery. Um, at the jail so that we can make sure that he's gotten it like as I explained he has an attorney that's handling a criminal case um, and, and they can He could certainly communicate that all right. Thank you Our next item is Madison W. Bonner DB, DBA logical choice heating and air LLC state certified license number CAC 1817937 Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 230445 COM. It's in regard to Dean Lewis, the homeowner complainant at 5950 Admiral Doyle Road, Pensacola, Florida 32506. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. Uh, Lewis, are you present today? Mr. Lewis notified me he was not going to be able to be present today. And Mr. Bonner, are you present today? I am. And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? I can do whatever y'all tell me. At this time, I'm going to have Mr. Bonner sworn in. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? <clears throat> yes, a formal complaint was filed on March 8th, 2023. And were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. Were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? Uh, I notified Mr. Bonner of the complaint, but we had had numerous conversations um, prior to the complaint actually being filed. And did the complainant provide supporting documentation uh, for the complaint, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, they did. And did the respondent provide any supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? He did not. Were permits obtained? If so, when and what are their current status? An after the fact um, permit was obtained on February uh, 21st, 2023 for a change out of a 3.5 ton system. Um, when I last checked, there's not been a final inspection 
set. Staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each violation and your justification. Code section 1837D15B, um, the installation of this uh, HVAC system took place in February of 2022, um, and the permit was not pulled until a year later. And as stated, it's never had its final inspection. Mr. Bonner, this is your opportunity to address the board in regard to the complaint. If you could please come forward to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Madison Bonner, uh, 8668 Fields Road, Milton, Florida, 32583. And this was uh, all my fault. I'm a one person show. I asked my wife to pull the permit. I never, I'd never, you know, double check with her to make sure she did pull it. So by the time that I was notified that, hey, there's a complaint here, I refiled or I got, personally, I got her to refile for the inspection or you know, get the permit. And we didn't hear anything back from Escambia County for quite a while because they didn't let us know that my workman's comp and all that was updated. And so by the time that I was actually notified by somebody, it had been months later. And I had all that corrected and I got it, you know, the permit pulled and everything. And I asked for a final inspection. So that's kind of surprising that it hasn't been final inspection. Again, my fault. I'm responsible for it. So it's just a really, it's a lot of miscommunication on my part and a lot of me not knowing how to work this new computer system. And that's, again, my fault. It's all my responsibility. Um, so it's just really a, it's, it's, it's an accident and I will, I want to clarify it. I want to fix it. I want to make it right. I want the customer happy. I don't want any complaints from anybody. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bonner, I will add, um, Mr. Lewis has got his home up for sale. So that's why it's something that he needs. Jen, if you could, um, I don't think he needs an NOC, the HVAC, the project was 25. No, um, and actually that legis recent legislation up that uh, amount to 15,000. So um, it, that project did not require an NOC. Um, so Mr. Bonner, I mean, it's really just a, a thing of scheduling that inspection, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. And you, I, could, you could walk right over when you're I, finished I here. I'll take care of that today. I, and again, I apologize. Is this your first time ever coming before? Oh, of course, yeah. you can see how nervous I am. Because I haven't <laughs> seen you. So. Okay. Um, Good question. Do we need to continue or? Mr. Chair? Okay, I, sure. I, I do have a question on this. Um, reading over this yesterday evening, Meraki installers, I may not be saying that right, are they a licensed contractor? They are. They are a solar contractor, mm -hmm. and it was my understanding that um, they sell these type of packages where, you know, they they do sell um, air conditioning. So are they equipment. licensed to do um, that? I I looked at that. There does appear to be a a uh, HVAC license holder under that Meraki. I contacted them and they said they didn't have that job. The superintendent, I'm assuming a project manager, told me that, that that's how I got to logic choice. The homeowner really didn't even know who was responsible for doing that. I know as a contractor, general residential building, you can sell a job and then hire a HVAC, but I guess I would defer to you guys in licensing then is that something that we need to be concerned about i can look into that matter further um typically you have to be able to contract for that type of work you have to hold that license that, uh, so these these packages that they're selling you would need to have each license type 
on your staff. Or, or be a builder license or be that a would be a division right, one right, contractor. Right, That's correct. Right. Um, I can come back to the board with that information. I can I can research that further. Um, it just caught my attention. I thought it'd be worth. And, and, and I don't know if it matters or not. That was the one and only job I've ever done for him because I didn't mm -hmm. like it. So <laughs> uh, I didn't like any of it. Mr. Lister, this may not answer your question in whole, but Meraki does hold a. Um, solar license, a master electrical state certified, and a air conditioning state certified. They all are active. And um, Mr. Lewis had very little documentation provided. I mean, there wasn't even a contract um, per se in there for me to even kind of understand how so this all came around. So would it be legal around. for a heat and air, and this would be for you inspector guys, I guess, would it be legal for an ins heat and air guy to sign a contract and then hire somebody else? I, I guess, I don't know. Tim, do you want to answer that question? I see you, I guess I see you, you stepping up. <laughs> yeah. I guess you could sub it out to somebody. Is that kind of what it would be? I believe you can because okay. it, it happens a good bit with uh, re-roofs. Right. If some right. extra work has to be done that a right. D1 contractor Right. Then the the roofing contractor becomes the primary, and the uh, you know general building or residential contractor becomes the secondary. Right. That's probably what they're doing. Then how they're okay. Just it flagged my attention. That definitely. So my, my suggestion to the board, because we're he's got to schedule an inspection, um, would be that we continue this yeah. hearing and and see how that plays out. That's, okay. that's my suggestion. Make a motion to continue the hearing. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt to you. I apologize. And if you want to wait for a second on that, and then I can enter your discussion. Whatever you say. Oh, wait. don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I was going to, that, that is an option. Instead of, uh, you can continue it and then see what happens with the inspection. And, if the, and, and then we wouldn't necessarily have to bring back. Uh, if you, if it, if it, if you get the paperwork and we'll know when it shows up on the, the documentation uh, whether or not it passed inspection. And so you just may want to give that option to your secretary to release release it. You could still bring it back with the knowledge that it passed inspection, unless so the board so thinks that they would like to really look at this for probable cause. So you want to um, withdraw the motion? I'm just saying you can do a, you know, continue it, but remember that you may be able to get this paperwork, the, the inspection done, and you could set up a motion that would allow you to address it that way, where you could say you continue the probable cause unless you come back with a positive inspection, and upon a positive inspection, you could dismiss. Is that your motion? That's my motion. <laughs> okay. Can I get a second? <laughs> second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. So just to help you understand, if you get that inspection scheduled um, and the inspection passes, then the decision of the board is to dismiss rather than have a, a further probable cause hearing. But if it fails, then you'll it need won't to fail, I promise. Then you'll I'll get make sure of it. if it fails, you'll get a notice that there is a probable cause. Okay. So they have a standing motion to dismiss if it passes. Right. So I can go out and schedule for an inspection and Take care of it now. Miss Janice would love to take care of you at the yeah. front desk. <laughs> We're good. Our next item is Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC, state registered license number RG29110398. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 230446 COM. It's in regard to Eli and Janice Smith, homeowner complainants at 6474 Lake Charlene Drive, Pensacola, Florida 32506. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Um, Mr. and Ms. Smith, are you present? I do not see that they are present. Mr. Lacoste, are you present? I do not see that Mr. Lacoste is present either. Um, just a reminder, Ms. Reber is already sworn in, so we're going to proceed. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint um, filed with the board, and on what date was it filed? Yes, there was, on March 22, 2023. 
And were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. And were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? He was notified about the complaint and did not respond. Did the complainant provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, he did. And did the respondent provide any supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? No, he did not. Were permits obtained? If so, uh, when and what are their current status? Lacoste obtained a permit for a new single family dwelling issued on January 21st, 2021. Uh, had a past framing inspection on March 4, 2022. Lacoste was also issued a roof permit on January 21st, 2021, which did not have any inspections. The Smiths terminated the contract and those permits on June 9th, 2022. Staff would request that documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each violation and your justification. Allegedly, Code Section 1837C6. Um, obviously, this was the construction of a new single family dwelling. Um, Mr. Lacoste was paid um, construction draws and also some earnest money and um, never completed enough work to justify those amount of payments that he was received. He also um, received an additional $36,000 from the Smiths for uh, change orders. That concludes. Oh, I'm sorry, I just stopped. Um, code section 1837D13C3 um, Mr. Lacoste abandoned the project, um, abandoned the project. That concludes staff's presentation. There's no other parties present to speak in regard to this case. Can I get a motion? Motion to move to disciplinary based on the alleged violations based on the alleged violations can i get a second second any discussion all in favor say aye, aye. any opposed motion carries staff's going to request a, a five minute break um we have to set up um the microsoft teams meeting for the complainants for our disciplinary hearing so if we could we could have that a five minute break, please. Thank Taking you. Taking a five minute break.
and this is this is just a. Can you, can you imagine? Can you imagine picking up an eighty gallon water heater? I can't right now, all day long. An empty eighty gallon water heater. Now, am I saying that? Is that what you're saying? Eighty gallon electric. Because I want to see his stuff. Empty, water heater. Eighty gallons. I know what one you is. You have to take your shirt off because you have to stick to it, <laughs> and you stick to it. Just pick it up on the platform. <laughs> I'm telling you, Hulse oh, okay. can't do it. Well, sometimes it's like it's more than that. I'm not saying that. It's that way. It's that way. It's that way. Oh, what I'm saying is, I'm not saying that two men. That's a dagger. Same way we're not. We're not sure. We're not sure. We cast money. Oh, here we go. I'm not saying that two or three. I'm just telling you the facts. I'm just telling you the facts. I'm just telling you the facts. It's just like these men. It's like these men identifying as women and going and beating the women in the women's sports. It's sick. It's sick. <laughs> and it's no wonder they beat them because it's, it's biological. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. When you get an inspection, no matter what it is, that extends it from it for another 180 days. Um, it's my understanding that if windows were not on it, they have a conversation with the inspector, but typically they have windows. It doesn't say windows. The contractor's not looking at it. Only very easily. He didn't have to put it very easily. Could have put it if he had the correct information. But, you know, it should have said something. So when the inspector came out, he knew exactly what he was looking at. Mike could have had a conversation with him. Also, you know, in some of the other things that came out, they won't say it like
most likely to be asking him that question. Right there. Right. I asked him the question. Right. 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 Right
Correct. And Dylan is not able to be here. He's in another meeting. No problem. Mr. Howard, are you present? Yes. And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Yes. At this time, I'm going to have both parties sworn in um, by the court reporter. And just a reminder, Ms. Reber is already sworn. And Ms. Carlson, do you swear? Yes. All right. So we're going to go on. Staff requests that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing for this case be moved into evidence. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And Ms. Reber, was any pro additional documentation provided after the probable cause hearing? There's no documentation. However, um, prior to this hearing, Mr. Howard did schedule another final inspection for the December 2022 final roof inspection that failed. And that's scheduled for tomorrow. All right. Ms. Carlson, this is your opportunity to speak to the alleged violate. Oh, well, I've got to state the alleged violations first. That might be helpful. So I'm going to pull up the administrative complaint to present. The alleged violations are code section 1837 C1, disregard or failure to correct building code violations or any municipal or county building codes, ordinances, or laws of the state of Florida. <coughs> code section 1837 C2, aiding or abetting any uncertified or unregistered person. Code section 1837 D98, mismanagement or misconduct causing financial harm to the customer. Code section 1837 D9H, failure to supervise construction activities. And code section 1837 D15C, job finished without a permit having been pulled or no permit until caught after job or late permit during the job resulting in missed inspection or inspections. So Ms. Carlson, it's your opportunity to address the board in regard to these alleged violations. Ms. Carlson, can you hear me? Yes. It's your opportunity to address the board in regards to the alleged violations. Um, so last time we were in last month, James stated that he would have it done in two weeks, which didn't happen, but he called us on Saturday or Sunday, Friday, sometime late last week and said that they'd been to Baker Metal and they were going to rip the roof up, everything off, redo it, and they are there and they were there this morning. And according to the what he told my husband, they're putting the purlings on or the, I don't ever know what they're called, but, you know, the cross little, they're putting down the, it is purlins. The peel and stick, and then they're putting the wood pieces across. And I don't know if they did put the wood pieces across. Last we heard, they had not. But I don't know if they're doing something different than what he originally stated to my husband. But um, last we know is there is the crew is there working. Ms. Carlson, do you have anything else in regard to the administrative complaint? I don't think so. Any questions? Mr. Howard, this is your opportunity to come to the podium and address the board in regard to the alleged violations. Uh, James Howard, uh, 1310 Missouri Boulevard. Um, what am I addressing first? 
Uh, the alleged violations within the administrative complaint. Okay. Um, as I said before, the permit, I was under the impression that I did pull the permit. The portal was just getting set up. I never received the part where you pay the bill, so I thought I had a permit. Um, once I was told that that wasn't the case, I went and got the permit. Um, the last time here, I said we were complete in two weeks. I haven't spoke with Ms. Carson. I spoke with Mr. Carson, and I've been scheduling around their it's an Airbnb house where people come in and out. So that and the rain. So each time I schedule, then I bump it off. But anyway, we scheduled last week. We had rain. We came back the next day, and the guys are there doing cleanup now. Everything's finished. I'm ready for inspection. I couldn't schedule inspection until I come into the office. Mr. Howard, would you like to address anything else that's within the alleged within within the administrative complaint? Do you want me to go one by one with you, or we can pull them up on the screen for you? That's fine. Okay. So, the the first one is eighteen thirty seven C one disregard or failure to correct building code violations or any municipal or county building codes, ordinance, or laws of the state of Florida. They cited not correcting the installation deficiencies cited within the failed inspection. Um, when the inspection failed, I was last in court. Uh, after that, I was hospitalized. Then my wife had spinal surgery, and then I was back in court. When I came in court that next time, I said I needed two weeks to get it done. We scheduled it, and that's what we're doing. That's what brings us to this point. And you said that you that you are waiting on an inspection. That you've corrected those as of this morning. Correct. Okay. The next one was 1837 C2, aiding or abetting any uncertified or unregistered person. Um, they cited subbing the contracted roof project persons not on your payroll and not licensed to perform the contracted project? Um, when I came in in December, I was informed that after 23 years, I've never heard this before until December, because I've always, as a contractor, subbed out the roofing to a roofing under a separate roofing contractor. Once my roofing license was in, in effect, occasionally if we get a heavy load like any other roofer here in town, there were subcontractors that have their license and insurance. So my biggest thing was to look for, make sure they have their general liability and workman's comp. That's what I've done. Until December, I was told that that is incorrect. And the next item is uh, code section 1837 D8 mismanagement or misconduct causing financial harm to the customer. They cited not taking precautions to contain the roof debris, which resulted in damage to the pool liner and some sewage backup. I still stand that um, I took precaution. We worked on one side of the yard. We made our cuts and everything over there. I didn't see where it was possible for the pool to be damaged. We did not cover the pool, but I didn't see where it it was from from us. And I supervised. I was in and out throughout the job. And that's the next item, 1837D9H, failure to supervise construction activities. They cited um, that you did not ensure that workers completed the project code and without causing damage to the homeowner's property. I, I just disagree. I mean, they did. We installed it away. I instructed them to install it. Uh, as far as the damage, I don't think we had anything to do with the damage. There was something left that was unplugged. Um, I don't know. The plug caused some damage where there's a pump where maybe someone unplugged it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how that was. We were tied to that. And then the last item is code section 1837 D15C, job finished with out of permit, having been pulled, no permit until caught after job, or late permit during the job, resulting in missed inspection or inspections, and they cited failing to obtain the required permit prior to the commencement and completion of the project. As I, as I said before, even with the dates of the notice commencement, the paperwork that was filed, I was under the impression I had a permit, or I had filed for a permit. Going through the process, later on, once this became an issue, I did see where that was not a permit paid for, 
but all the stuff was turned in. The notice of commencement was uploaded and all that, but the permit was not in effect until you hit the last submit button. But I was learning the program then. Any questions? Ms. Carlson, do you have anything else yeah. to add? Um, I mean, no, I just really, we just really, 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 really want this done and we want it done correctly. I mean, there was damage, but whatever at this point. Yeah, we would love to have ever uh, damage paid for the pool and the leaking and different leaking spots, but we just really want this done and done correctly. Um, I mean, we're pretty much right at a year that we started this. Um, so we're getting into our busy time and we just want people to enjoy our house. We want to enjoy our house, we want people to enjoy Pensacola. We just want it done, we want the crew out of there. That's about all I have to say. <laughs> And this is going to be finished, or it, the pr job's finished, you're just waiting for inspection? Correct. They're doing cleanup. Um, there's some guys who's there this morning with my son. They're just doing cleanup. Okay. Making sure everything's clean. It was pretty much clean yesterday. And there was a, a ridge vent that had to be screwed on. So they should be gone by now. Okay. I'd like to recommend we continue the disciplinary hearing till the July meeting until we get all the inspections passed and satisfactory approval from the owners of the house. Make sure all permits are closed out and there's no other violations after the inspection. Can I get a second? A second. All in favor? One more thing? Sure. Just a second. Um, um any discussion with you're okay with miss carlson now after okay go ahead miss carlson um and again i know you guys don't like inspect for ugly but the last time it was done there was like clear film left on a bunch of stuff but then it was baked on with baker metal logo and stuff we just really want this done so it's not embarrassing um that's really for james that's that's all we ask and if everything is is dropped if it passes inspection just get it done get it done right and get it done looking nice um i just wanted to put that caveat in there just because things were done halfway and we want it done to the, the best that we would get from any contractor thank you yeah i agree i spoke with the husband we've taken numerous pictures all over before after every from every angle you could take pictures so, yeah, all that's being removed, all that. All right, thank you. We need a vote. Is there any discussion or do you want to vote on the motion? I, I actually have one more question for Mr. Sure. Howard. Did you correct your insurance to include roofing? No, I just didn't sub anymore. My insurance was already set up for my crew. But as far as subbing out, when I was told that, that was incorrect. I went over to talk with the insurance agent. He disagreed, but I just haven't done it that way anymore. Okay, but your insurance certificate is specifically for a general contractor, and it excluded all roofing activities, which is why her claim was denied, was because you weren't covered for roofing activities. I thought that was because of my general, I mean, my GC license. I thought she wouldn't. Mm -mm. Well, I don't See. know. I have to talk back with Logan. Uh, but whatever he told me when I left, whatever I, I need for what I'm doing is correct. Okay. And he said he spoke to someone else here about that. Okay. Well, I'll it, follow up on that. And it, if you can, bring an update on that whenever this comes back. Sure. If, if they decide to bring this, okay. continue this. Okay, uh, can I get a vote on the motion to continue? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you.
And as you heard before, it will be July because right. of how they, the, the recommendation they had earlier. Okay. Any, any more business? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what the board said. It, this all cut out. Could you just give me a synopsis? <laughs> yes, Ms. Carlson. So this matter has been continued to our next scheduled meeting to ensure that that inspection gets performed and that and we want to update on your satisfaction of the project and also Ms. Jordan um, requested an update on his insurance because um, previously his insurance did not include uh, performing roofing uh, so she would like an update on that as well okay perfect that sounds fair to me thank you thank you thank you Ms. Carlson there are no other items to before the board. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Yeah. Don't even need a second. We just do it. <laughs> All those in favor, stand up. Yeah. <laughs>